And that doesn't even speak to the calming and emotional presence he gives a Warriors team that without him would have even more volatility. Every team in the league should be worried, not just the Warriors. Almost 60 points from their bench? Yep. You got no chance. Chris Broussard here, and welcome to the brand new Hoops on Fox podcast. This podcast will give you your daily dose of all things NBA from Fox Sports, including the best content from Skip and Shannon, Nick Wright, plus special guests, fresh NBA content from myself, post-game interviews from NBA stars around the league, and much, much more. Up first, Chris Broussard joins Colin Coward to talk about the 2019 NBA playoffs. I found the second person on planet Earth who did not watch Game of Thrones. How are you? <laughs> I haven't seen one minute of Game of Thrones in my life. Billions? You ever watch Billions? Nope. Well, that's good. Is it? Oh, I've heard great things about both. I think my wife and I will start watching Game of Thrones. I'm going to suggest it. We've been looking for something since Breaking Bad. Mm, that luck. was a while ago. <laughs> You're a little it's behind. I know. Pretty we, we watched Breaking Bad like five years later. I mean, yeah. but then you can just binge it. It's no, actually better that it's way. Great. It's actually Because it if is, you like it, right. you always it's have something perfect. to watch. I agree. By the way, what did you make of Tiger Woods yesterday? I was in, th and I'm not a huge Tiger Woods fan, certainly not a huge golf fan, but I was at the edge of my seat. I was like, Boston Indy, it can wait, you know, and uh, I was happy for him. Uh, I thought it was great um, comeback story. I, I felt like he was unfairly true. Now, I don't agree with his, you know, philandering and all that, cheating on his wife, but I felt there's a lot of athletes <laughs> that do that. Right. And the only difference between them and Tiger Woods is he got caught. Right. And so to see media people who know other guys were doing it in golf and other sports and just to pounce on Tiger the way they did, even guys in the media that do the same thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe not to that degree because they don't have the opportunities, but they pounced on him too. And I just thought it, the hypocrisy was ridiculous. And so I'm glad – that he bounced back, and uh, I, I'm just hoping now he can challenge Nicholas, 18. No, that's just – That'd be great. But it was great. It was just – I was – By the was way, the, the, Tiger won his first Masters. Tom Brady was a backup quarterback at Michigan. <sighs> it's been a long road. <laughs> it's been a long road. Man. All right, Sixers lost. Let's start with this. More talent. That team's a mess. Something's happening in the Sixers locker room. What is it? Who's to blame? You can't lose to the Nets at home. And that's the one series that we both said had upset on right, it. Right. We both said we don't trust the Sixers' chemistry. Who's to blame? They got so many issues. I, I'm going to start not because he's the most to blame, but Brett Brown, he's going to go. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just he was great for the process, but now when he faces a tactical coach, this is why I said there's no way they're beating Boston. If they ever play, like, there's no way. Because Brad Stevens is too tactical and outcoaches him. Kenny Atkinson is similar. He's got his team playing hard, 110% all the time. Tactically, he's doing, he's outcoaching Brett Brown. So that's one. Two, your two stars or two of your four, Embiid and Simmons, are not mature enough to lead this team deep into the playoffs. I don't think game. they like each other. Well, yeah, there's tension there. It's not, I don't think, it, it's not outright you know, despising one another, but there's tension there because both want to be the man. Embiid is still young and silly. And he wants to, he's, you know, he, he wants to be this celebrity. And Ben, there are people that'll tell you Ben really is more concerned about being a celebrity than a superstar basketball player. Ugh. Not realizing the celebrity comes with being the superstar basketball player. Look, 20 years ago, certainly in the 80s, you would have been able to get away with not being able to shoot. But in today's NBA... It's a, it's a major problem. It is, it's a downright liability. No question. Because as a point guard, he's great in the open floor, but in the half-court sets, Don't have he to struggles. Him. Don't no. have to guard him. So they put him in the post, and, and you can't have two guys in the post anymore. So that forces MB to go outside, which he likes to do anyway. Yeah. So that's why he's shooting threes and, and mid-range jumpers. Embiid should be able to demolish them. You saw what Boban did in the post. Yeah. They couldn't stop him. So those are problems. They, Brett hasn't figured out how to get Tobias Harris involved. Yeah. They, they've got major issues. They should still win this, even with Embiid being hampered. But they got, they got issues. Okay. Man. I, I read uh, this 
The Warriors took a 1-0 series lead. You say they have an unspoken rallying cry in the playoffs? One last hurrah. A timeout. So the Warriors in the locker room are saying one. No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm in here. In here. They can't be spoken because they can't outright talk about KD. You know, we know he's leaving. But in, they, in their heart of hearts, they all know this is the last hurrah. KD is probably out. DeMarcus is certainly out. Draymond. They're not paying Draymond big money. Period. No way. Okay, so maybe he's, I think they will, I think there's a number they'll go to to keep him in an extension. But he just signed with Clutch. And one thing about Clutch and Rich Paul, they try to get every last dollar. Oh, yeah. And they, I don't know if Draymond thinks, hey, I could go play with LeBron and the Lakers. I think Draymond's smart enough to know that most in most teams, he is not Draymond. Like, he could go somewhere and get exposed. You know, because if you expect too much from him, you expect he's a max guy. He's not that. He's perfect in Golden State. Hopefully he stays. But but my point is, this could be, they know in their heart of hearts, this could be it. Let's go out with a bang. Let's win three straight. KD wants to compete with LeBron. LeBron didn't win three straight with the Heat. This is another way for him to up LeBron. So I, that's the silent, the unspoken rallying crowd. They just meet eyes, and they know one last hurrah. Portland beats the Oklahoma City Westbrooks. He's <laughs> snippy after the game. It would be easy for me to hammer on Russell Westbrook, but my takeaway is Thunder's still going to win this series, right? Yes, I think so. Look, Paul George, his injury is a problem. I think he's going to, because it's his shooting shoulder, he's going to have to go to the hoop more and not settle for the three-point shot. He was, what, four for 15, I think, from three uh, in, in game one. So I need him to penetrate more where he could probably finish at a better rate than he is from three with that injury. Westbrook, look, I've said it. I, I love him. Iconic, all that. Ugh. He's not going to win a title. No. If they get – I do have them going to the Western Conference Finals. I think you're Look at a, that side of the bracket. Either the Spurs, okay, either Denver, I who's would, a newbie in the playoffs, or Portland, who's been bounced and swept the last two years, or OKC, okay, one of them's going to the Conference Finals. It's like a bad region in the NCAA <laughs> tournament. So, you, you thinking Spurs? Because I pick Spurs over Denver. I just don't. I think they're unraveling. I think Westbrook's unraveling again. I think it's who he is. I'm not trying to pick on him, but I, I think they'll win this series because they have better players. But I <clears throat> and I think Paul George, will, they're not going to go five for 35. I sat there no. for about an hour and they didn't hit a single three. <laughs> and it's bad. Uh, finally, Lakers head coaching search. Who's it going to be a minute left? Ty Lue. I mean, it's uh, done. But I think they're doing it backwards. Unless it's, it's I guess Rob Palinka's running everything now. Because... If, if, if you bring in a president to be over him, why in the world wouldn't you hire the president and he and Rob pick the coach? I, that's what I thought. It's ridiculous. It, or if you're bringing in a GM to be under Rob, uh, Rob or an assistant GM, why don't you bring him in and let them work together and I, pick the coach? I don't get it. I said it this weekend to a friend. They're picking the coach before the general manager. It, it, it makes no sense. And that's why, look, Jawan, I think he may be great one day, but you can't experiment right now. You got two, three years with LeBron James. Is, you better go all is in. Is Palenka hiring the coach quickly because he wants to force Genie to know, oh, I can't hire a GM because I got to make Palenka the GM because he hired the coach. It's, it's, I think Genie's all in on Palinka because he's Kobe's guy. Because that was the sticking point with Magic. It wasn't yeah. Luke so much. It was Palinka. That's Kobe's guy. Next, Steven Jackson joins Nick and CeCe to dissect the Rockets' big win over the Jazz. What I do like is they totally reinvented themselves from last year. Even so, we, we'd like to be able to say that they would like to be in that position. Right. For one, they don't have home court advantage. They're not playing the same style. And the role players... They have empowered them over the last two months that they feel comfortable in the roles because they're going to be quarters and our games that James Harden is not going to be able to at the rate he was scoring at. Because in the playoff, the defense are going to be totally different. different, And that's what we saw in game number one. So I'm very confident in the style for which they play. They do have a, a different style now. And I like that Harden was distributing the ball more, was very, very patient because the defenses, man, are going to be tricked up. And, I mean, they're, 
And for, for Hart, he can't be that aggressive on the offensive end all the time if they're going to commit to playing that hard on him beyond the three-point line. Their defensive scheme yesterday was terrible. Send him right and just let him throw lobs to Capella all night. That was, that's, that's horrible. That was, that's a horrible game plan. You have to some kind of way either play him straight up and just play defense on everybody. You can't give James. James is too smart to give him either way. Now, with James, the way he's playing, the way he's been playing all year, every team in the league should be worried, not just the Warriors. Every team should be worried. Well, this is the problem. If you play him straight up with Ricky Rubio, he's going to go for 45. Well, that, Ricky Rubio can't guard him. Well, that, I, I don't know. Here's the thing, he, and this is what, as evidenced by the season he had, nobody right now can guard him. Like, this is the point D'Antoni's been making all year, is he presents a unique problem for everybody. And so the Jazz came into game one saying, we're going to throw something totally different at him. And guess what? It failed miserably. That yeah. wasn't different. A lot of teams did that, and it didn't work. But it was different than how the Jazz had guarded him in the regular right. season. The Jazz, right. definitely. So, right. And so, th so they said, we're, we're going to try to throw something at you you're not expecting. And Harden said, okay, instead of going for 40, I'll go for 29 with 10 assists. Like, And that little lob to Capella, when you combine it with the fact that Harden has mastered that floater, a shot he used to be terrible at, mm -hmm. now once he's that deep in the lane, it's over. Mm -hmm. Like, And this is one of the things the Rockets were so frustrated about with the stat that you pointed out that's not frustrated with you specifically, but everyone bringing up Giannis had more unassisted dunks than anyone in years and years. They... The Rockets would tell you, yeah, and James Harden had more unassisted baskets than anyone in years and years, be it threes or be it in the lane. What was most important for the Rockets yesterday was not the 122. It was the 90. It was that they absolutely choked out Utah defensively. Even if they had given up 100, the overall intensity and the buy-in of everyone on the roster was totally different. Now, that, Jenna... That was on the level that we saw last year. Because people, they talk about their offense last year, but last year their defense was, that's where they made their drastic exactly. improvement. That's right. For a reason. And that, and that was where, and this year they don't have a reason, but they have P.J. Tucker who's still playing at, should be in consideration for defensive player of the year. They have guys come coming on, off Nate. the, what? Come on. You disagree with me on that? Yeah, come on, man. Okay, well, I, th I think the. Defensive I, player of the year? I think he'll, he'll be first team all defense. He'll get votes for defensive player of the year. We'll see when the ballots come out. I don't think he's going to win it, but I said I think he should be in consideration for it. Point being, for the Rockets, the most important thing of this series, because I know a lot of people thought that the Jazz have four or five matchup, Jazz third best record in the NBA since the break. Mm -hmm. Could they take the Rockets six? Could they take them seven? Could they upset them? The Rockets need to win this series quickly. They need to get rid of Utah in a maximum of five games because Golden State is going to be done with the Clippers almost assuredly in four and a maximum of five. And so it's not only win quickly, but games like this where, oh, wait, how many minutes did Chris Paul play? Oh, 31. How many minutes did James Harden play? Oh, 32. You could rest them for the majority of the fourth quarter. That's what they need because they have to go into that Golden State series operating at full capacity, full health, fully rested. How much does Utah change the game plan, though, now going into game two? What they, have, they have to change it up defensively. But this ain't the same Utah team that, we, that we, they played last year. Their Utah team last year was way better. You know, they had way more. They was better offensively. Mm -hmm. this, offense, this team can't really score. They can't really score like that. I don't think this, I think this might be a sweep to me. You know, and, and you're right. They, they do need to get these guys out the way. But I think James was pacing himself last night. He knew how easy this game was going to be. He knew how easy he was scoring. He saw the defense, the way they was playing, mm -hmm. and realized he didn't have to work that hard. And I think that's what he's doing this year that's smarter. He's, he's pacing himself, understanding that he has to really, really go out and play like an MVP with the Western Conference Finals and the, the final right. rounds, not the first round. Yeah, this series starts in game three. Last night they were able to send a message, but game three will really be able to tell the difference because that will be able to tell us if Houston's in complete control, Utah is a tough place to play. No one in the NBA wants to play a series there. And I believe that Quinn Snyder's one of the unrated coaches in the NBA. He'll make some adjustments as they get through game two and head back to Utah for game number three. So game number three becomes the critical part, that first half of that game, because Golden State is going to sweep the Clippers. He's a tough-nosed coach, too. Quinn Snyder's excellent. I, I think, to get back to your original question, I think this Rockets team is better than last year's team.
just for the record. I think they are, because in the playoffs last year, once the Rockets lost Maba Mute, they were down to essentially seven guys they could play. Right. They played their starters, they played Gerald Green, and they were and they were on a six and a half, seven man rotation in those games. Now, they have Daniel House, they have Austin Rivers, they have Kenneth Fareed to go along with Gerald Green coming off the bench. They got nine guys that they feel comfortable with Nene if he gets back into the rotation. They, they don't need in these games for Harden to play 40 minutes. They can they they can rely on their bench more, and I think defensively, what they've been post All Star break is far more likely to what they'll be in the playoffs than what they were the first half. Yeah, of the those season. other guys too. They have, they don't have a whole bunch of playoff experience. Right. So when the bright lights hit them, how do those guys play? That that would be. Everybody can't make the same shot in regular season as to make the shot in playoffs. It's a different shot. Now, Chris Broussard joins Skip and Shan to dissect the 76ers' struggles. I am going to start with Shannon here. How big of a deal is the cell phone incident? I think it's a big deal for me. I'm a big family guy. And I don't care what the game is, Skip. It could be the Super Bowl. It could be a World Series. It can be an NBA Finals game. If your, wife's going in, if your wife is having a baby or your child is sick or a loved one is sick and you choose to miss that game, you have my blessing. Okay. But all I ask... If you're there, you're there. Mm -hmm. If you're in the, if you're here, because he didn't play, I guess he was inactive. If that's the case, Skip, because my thing is, if you worried about that and you're here, your mind's not in the game. Mm -hmm. Why not just stay with your family, take care of that situation. When she's better, you come back to us. Mm -hmm. I, that, that, that's my only problem, I, and I get it. But for me, the most important thing, and it tells me that he. You have to have a phone on you that the situation might be a little dire. You need to be there firsthand. Yep. You don't need to come to this ball game because guess what? They were going to play again tonight, and they're going to play again probably Thursday, Friday night, and they're going to have another game after that. Mm -hmm. Take care of that business first. That's my only problem that I have with this situation. I don't need to know what's going on with his daughter. That's between him and the, and, and the organization of the Sixers. Sure. But this was not a very good look. And then you got Joel Embiid involved in the situation. Joel definitely needed to have his mind into the ball game, but I would have just preferred in a situation like this, if your daughter is sick or a loved one is sick, mm -hmm. and you're going to bring the phone, which tells me, Skip, your mind is not going to be really focused on this mm -hmm. because it's hard to compartmentalize. Mm -hmm. Some people can do it, but clearly in this situation, he wasn't going to be able to. I just believe he and the Sixers would have been better served had he stayed with his wife or, or whomever it is and his daughter. I believe he would have been better served yep. and the Sixers organization would have been better served. Mm. Yeah, I don't really disagree with him. If, if she's that sick, and I don't think we know exactly right. the nature of the illness, but yeah, if he would have called off, because obviously, like you said, he was inactive as it was. But I don't think it was that big of a deal. It was wrong. Right. It was a bad look. And MB did nothing wrong. He happened to sit next to Amir, mm -hmm. and he, Amir says, you know, it, it, most people are going to look down or whatever. Right. It's a teammate. So I don't think Embiid did anything wrong. Amir was wrong for having his cell phone with him. However, in today's day and age, as bad as it is, I can see a player today thinking, I'm inactive. I can have my phone with me. My daughter's sick. Let me check. You know, like it's right. not that big of a deal. If he, if you are active and you're going to play, then there's no reason. And again, I, I don't think he should have had the cell phone anyway. But that's the thing. But so certainly if, if you're inactive, active. If he's inactive, why even come? No, I, I feel you on that. But I don't, I, I don't know how sick she is. It, it may not be a huge sickness. Again, we don't know. Either way, you can al always have team doctors Someone. and people getting word to you mm -hmm. as it is. Mm -hmm. I, again, it was wrong. I think the Sixers have handled it perfectly. You find him. You don't make a huge deal out right. of it. Because I don't think it's – if Embiid had had a cell phone or Simmons or somebody that's playing, even if it was Amir Johnson and he had been playing, he's active, I think it would have been even worse. But it was bad, but I don't think it was, like, hmm. horrible. How did the team react to this? How did Brett Brown, the coach, react to this? He was livid. They didn't give any pass to Amir Johnson. So they probably know the backdrop of this, how sick the daughter is, mm -hmm. or, or not sick. I don't know. I have no idea. But they gave him no pass. And if they had really thought he deserved one, any sympathy here, they would have protected him. Mm -hmm. And they would have gone to great lengths to explain what the situation was. And they did not. They went right after him right after the game. 
And Brett Brown was also not happy with Joel Embiid. And I don't think he should have been either. And I yeah. disagree with you that he did nothing wrong. Yeah. I, I, it, you can say he's kind of a victim of it because you can't seem insensitive. Well, you know, right. but, I mean, but, yeah. but still, you're in the middle of game one of the playoffs. And I have said all year, Joel Embiid is the new beast of the East mm -hmm. post LeBron. Right. But now you got to live up to it. And to, I still consider him the leader of that team, which may be the problem with that team, because you, you have to you have to have enough focus that, that you wouldn't even acknowledge the cell phone. And, and I get it. I, again, it's hard for us to talk about because we don't know how just instinctive. To, OK, OK. You know but what I, mean? to, to, mm -hmm. I, I know one guy who used to be the beast of the East up in Chicago. And if you'd tried that stunt on him during a playoff game, <laughs> you, you would have had hell to pay. And it wouldn't matter how sick your daughter was, to your point. Then, then go home, go be with her. That's, and, that, and that, that's fine, but you can't be distracting the, the star player, nor can he acknowledge d during the fourth quarter. It's just such a bad look. It's part and parcel of what's wrong with this basketball team. It's, there's something missing at the heart of this team, mm -hmm. the desire, the commitment, the, the, the sacrifice you have to make to win championships. Yeah. That, they're not showing it to me. They're better than Brooklyn. And I know Brooklyn's a really good basketball team, and Brooklyn has a bench that Philly no longer has. And I know that Joel has some big knee issue that almost cost him the start in yes. this game. And so I'm, I'm not sure how bad it is. But that still doesn't preclude what happened on the bench. You, ju you just can't do it on either. He, he, he was part of what happened. And that's, my, that, that, and that's my only thing, Chris. I have no problem. If someone is having, you know, I, I've heard people say, I don't care if my wife's having a baby. If it's the Super Bowl, I'm playing. Or if it's the World Series, or yada, yada, I'm playing. Okay, that's you. You, may, you and your wife make that decision yep. that you're going to be there or you're not going to be there. I got no problem either way. But all I ask is that you do is that when you be here, you be present. And being present <laughs> means I need your undivided attention. Mm -hmm. Now, if, you're, if what's going on back home mm -hmm. is more than you can handle and you're not going to be able to focus on the job at hand, I would prefer you stay at home. That's all. I get it, but again, I don't think that had any impact on Embiid. I don't think that had anything to do no, no, with no. the way he played. And Amir didn't play. So I, I, I agree it was wrong, but they got far worse problems oh, yeah. than that. Well, Ben Simmons needs to play better. Right. Where I agree I mean, with you, Skip. Play at all. Where, <laughs> where I agree with you is this does get to the heart, even though I don't think Embiid did anything wrong. It gets to the heart. Embiid and Simmons are not mature enough nope. yet to lead them deep in the playoffs. Right. It's as simple as that. Embiid's just a silly, happy goal. He he's, he's just not ready I, yet. I got it. And Simmons... I mean, you saw everything. We can talk about his play on the court, but the comments he made afterwards about the fans. Right. right. Yeah. Like, stay on that side. Ben Simmons, and I've sat on here and I've praised him. I've, I actually, I feel kind of crazy now for, I compared him to Magic Johnson early in his career. <laughs> he has become a liability to them. Yeah. Because offensively, he it's four on five. Yeah. Uh -huh. Period. He can only Unless lay it up in the post. Yes, yes. And then when you put him in the post, that forces Embiid to, for spacing yep. to go outside. And now I got Embiid taking five three-pointers and going 0 for 5. 0 for Some 5. of it's Embiid's fault. I agree. Right, he, yeah. he wants to go out there. He loves to hang But at the, the same time, mm -hmm. for spacing, they kind of have to get, a, get the big out of there because Simmons is down right. there. So th they got some serious issues. I think they'll still win this series, but they can't guard Brooklyn's guards. Mm -hmm. no. Simmons and Reddick can't stay in front of them. And you saw Dinwiddie, Spencer Ugh. Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, and D'Angelo Russell had field days. The first and, two guys you named came off the bench. Right. The field. <laughs> field. Mm -hmm. And they, they made the fifth most uh, three-pointers per game in yep. the season. So if you when they penetrate, if you don't stop them, they're kicking out. They're gonna, this could go seven. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and if Bede is, is injured and he almost not missed the game, you, they're not beating Brooklyn with a 50% Joel Embiid. I agree. Because Ben Simmons, as you mentioned, he's not mature enough. Look, they keep on talking about, oh, he can develop a jump shot. Well, he needs to get on it. Yeah. Because right now he is That's a he's he is. a liability on the offensive end, Skip, because anything outside of eight feet, he ain't making. What did we see? He ain't even taken. <laughs> what did we see in his one year at LSU when he obviously did not want to be there for that one year coming from Australia? saying, I have to go here to Baton Rouge right. for one year before mm -hmm. I can play the real basketball. You gotta do it. 
but he was not invested. He was not committed. He had low motor. And I kept saying on TV, is that the real guy or will he take it up a notch when he becomes a pro basketball player? And I don't see the motor run hot. I, I don't see the killer will in him that you need. He, he's got star ability in him, no obviously, because he's got the passing gift and he's how tall do we say is six, six ten? ten? Six ten. Okay. All right. He, he can do everything he can except, except shoot. shoot. Except shoot. Except shoot. Without, without, that's kind of hard. That's like, that's <laughs> like a pitch. NBA. Man, that pitcher, man, that joke can do everything but pitch. Right. But you a pitcher. <laughs> 20 years ago, certainly in the 80s, that would have been okay. Yes. Maybe. Today's NBA, yep. you no. can't. No. There's no way. Well, well, he does have some magic potential, but magic taught himself to How to shoot right. Magic right. was a decent right. set. Right. He right. had that right. set yeah, shot. Push shot. Up. But that's the thing, Skip. You talk about LeBron needed to shoot a thousand free throws. Ben Simmons needs to shoot a thousand shots no a question. day. A day. No question. No and question. then, I hate to say this, people will laugh at this, but you know who they miss the most on this team? They miss Bellinelli and Ilya Sova. Because well, coming off the it. bench, and they would come out and just, they were fearless, yeah. tough, mentally right. tough guys who would change the flow of the game. Right. Now they got Mike Scott coming off the bench, and I've just never loved him. He goes one for eight He's from three. Okay, but Skip, you can't have you can't have your two starters. Uh, JJ Redick score five points, nope. and Ben Simmons score nine. That's you fourteen. You're gonna you lose. Can't. And when you get and when you get guys like you know coming off their bench and they're getting almost sixty points from their bench. Yep. You got no chance. Following Stephen Jackson is back with Nick and Cece to break down the Lakers coaching search. Stephen, when I teased this the last segment, you said, who in the world would call Steph Curry underrated? Doc called Steph underrated. Does Steph not get enough credit for for the work he does for that team? How's he underrated? He just made past uh, Ray Allen for all-time threes in playoffs. How's he underrated? He's a three-time champ. How is he underrated? He's an two-time MVP. How is he underrated? This kid is great. I think people who don't watch basketball don't know the game. Uh, just hate the Warriors because KD on the team, mm -hmm. don't give him his props. Everybody knows Steph is great. He's going down as one of the best players in the game. Definitely the best shooter we've ever seen. Uh, I was on the team when he got drafted, so he was my rook for a little while before I got traded. It's the, the, a great kid. I don't think he's underrated. I just think a lot of people hate him because they're so great. And when you're great, that's what happens. There's a lot of times I used to break down Jerry Rice's film. I used to get specific film of certain routes that he ran. And I always thought he was one of the greatest football players ever and definitely the greatest wide receiver. But when I used to break it down and I used to really study him compared to looking at him versus other wide receivers and going against defensive back compared to studying, I think Doc Rivers is talking about when I study this, because now I, it's not the regular season. I'm studying the Warriors and what they do. And every time I watch the clip, it's like, man, he moves better without the ball. You know something? Man, his ball handling is better. Man, you know something? He is not as bad defensively. Hey, you know something? He's a better rebound. So even in greatness, I think when you slow it down and you start to study what you do in these playoffs, you know that. Man, they know all your tendencies. All your, and then he starts to see how it affects the team. Well, man, Clay wouldn't be as good because I'll be able to help out a little more on him if Steph's not of there. Course. The overall spacing and I think the system that they run, they've refined it a little bit because Steph – is, he's a better ball handler than he was five years ago, and he's definitely better, more physical, moving without the basketball than he was five years ago. So I think those are the things that someone like Doc Rivers is, is trying to point out um, to people who don't study it every day. And that doesn't even speak to the calming and emotional presence he gives a Warriors team that without him would have even more volatility. Like, okay, Steph Curry, I disagree with you, Stephen. He is 100% underrated. And he, you know how I'll be able to prove it? Wait till the MVP voting comes out. And we see that once again, he might finish outside of the top five. Might not even finish with the most MVP votes of anyone on his own team. When people say, well, you know who had a better year than Steph this year? Nikola Jokic. It's absurd. He is the... He is the difference maker for them. Without him, could they win a championship? Maybe. Without him, would they still be a really good team? Yes. But... What he does to defenses and the way he can dominate a possession that he never touches the basketball with his movement and with the attention, the utter fear he puts into people. There was a play in this game this weekend where he takes the ball up court. There's 19 on the shot clock. He's got two guys on him. He's about 32 feet from the basket. Confidence. And just pulls up. And it's not a bad shot. Last week, the reason I said he absolutely has more to prove, more to accomplish as an NBA player is 
he is he's a guy one of the three guys I think playing today right now that has oh I, I can get damn near the top of this pyramid as my best case scenario what is Steph Curry's you know best case scenario for his career half dozen championships couple more MVPs add some finals MVPs like you can't tell the story of basketball without in the first couple paragraphs talking about the greatest shooter who ever lived who helped create one of the greatest dynasties of modern NBA history like that's who Steph Curry is and I think at times because of Durant and because people are sick of the Warriors mm -hmm. people forget that and they absolutely forget the part you pointed out see one of the best rebounders at the point guard position we have in the league no longer a bad Bad defender at this point he's a more than adequate defender and an excellent ball handler and passer of the basketball you the reason why I say he's not underrated because if you go in any locker room sure and look at all them players in there who they think about Steph and KD if you look on that right. board if you look on that board who we probably worried about Steph who was the most one of the most feared players in the league not just because he talks trash, he'll knock you down because right. he's unguardable. Steph Curry, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's underrated. I don't think he's underrated by players. Right, and, and that's, that's what I'm speaking from. Right. I'm speaking yeah. from as a player, he's definitely respected and definitely a top five player in the league. Oh, when you talk about his, his calming effect on the team, I think that's something that goes underrated, and people don't talk about that. But, but, but the season the Warriors had where there has been flare-ups and tension, mm -hmm. talk about his influence on the team and being able to keep that unit together. Well, he's the calming influence. If you look at Steph, his overall demeanor, there's leadership in a lot of different ways. And it doesn't have to always be Tom Izzo r r screaming at someone in your face. It don't have to always be someone like Draymond, something like that. Steph has done it in the type of way that this organization, they made a bet on him where they didn't have to a number of years ago. And they've invested in him, and this organization is around him. When they went out to get KD, Steph didn't have a problem with it. So that all leads to his overall demeanor, what he's going to be about on a daily basis. There is no warrior working on their game harder. And they got a bunch of guys that work on their game. But none of them can say, you know something, I work harder than Steph. And that brings you a, a great deal of cachet inside that locker room when you go to say something. It's about not only the things that you do, but how you show them on a daily basis. And I, I and that leadership you talk about, I mean, the 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 respect that Steph has around like, as far as NBA players, that lead, that's that, that's from a leadership standpoint. Also, not only what he does on the basketball and, court. And that means more to, more to him more than anything that the players feel that way about him. And I compare Steph to Tim Duncan. He's Tim Duncan. Is, uh, as he has the same calm as Tim Duncan. A lot of uh, you you have you have to have one player on the team when guys get out of control. You, you have a lot of Stephen Jackson. You have a Draymond. You have a Boogie Cousins. You have to have a guy like Steph that's an even kill at all times. It's times where uh, him and uh, Draymond go up for the rebound and Draymond is all irate, but Steph will go to him and, and calm him down and give him a high five. You need a guy like Steph and, and his the way he approaches the game and his calmness is very important to that team because you got a lot of guys that's all over the place. Thank you for listening to the Hoops on Fox podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review letting us know what you think of the show.